Okay, share screen. So, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right. So, today, oh, my and name the is. Visual, it is not science, it is science advances. Oh, okay. But this one is the. I copied it from the PowerPoint that was on the website. I didn't change anything. I think it's. Okay. Yeah. Because again, it, it's a it's a part of Science Magazine. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. The, yeah. The journal Science Advances. Yes. Yes. I know that. But the, this this slide, I tried to like copy the whole slide from there, and uh, I put it like that. So. I think okay. It, yes. <laughs> That's why it's like that. But yeah, okay. we know this paper was this year like on Science Advances, and the title. So this paper is from the lab of Dr. Mukherjee himself, and uh, the title of this paper is Switching the Intracellular Pathway and Enhancing the Therapeutic Efficacy of Small Interfering RNA by Oroliposome. So in the lecture uh, last week, we discussed a lot about like liposomes, how we increase the efficacy, the, all those drug delivery using nanoparticles. But this one, now we will see the real implication, how we can put it in the uh, uh, research lab or in the you know scientific community to prevent cancer or try to kill the cancer cells. And uh, this paper specifically talks about oroliposome. So before going into the paper, the, I want to talk briefly about the significance of this paper. So here, like this paper focuses mainly on uh, the approach of like uh, gene silencing using siRNA, small interfering RNA. So that this is considered a viable therapeutic approach because this has been done like very often in the field of uh, scientific research. So. The main challenge for this, like using siRNA, is that it is like it lacks the effective delivery system because when we are trying to target cancer cells, we need to know that we are targeting our normal cells as well. So how we develop a system that those like silencing RNA, small interfering RNA, will reach the cancer cells and not affect like affect the normal cells that much as they do for the cancer cells. So on this paper, so uh, the researchers doped a conventional sRNA liposomal formulation. Then they combined that formulation with gold nanoparticles, and that is termed as oroliposome because we know oro oro means gold, orum oros. So oro comes from gold, and then liposomes is just like we are combining gold nanoparticles with liposomes. And then the uh, best thing about oral liposomes is that what we will see uh, later in the paper is that it significantly enhanced gene silencing and without like increased toxicity in the cells and also tissues. So in this paper, um, MIKU1, mitochondrial calcium uptake 1 is one of the target gene. Uh, uh, the researchers, I don't know, you know how, how I need to say they or because you are right there so i will refer they as the researchers from now on so yeah it's fine yeah. <laughs> yes so uh so they have used miku1 as one of their target and what this uh, is is that it is a glycolytic uh, switch in ovarian cancer so which promotes both tumor growth and therapy resistance so uh, what the uh, researchers are doing is that they are trying to deliver miku1 siRNA and trying to silence miku1 gene in the cancer cells and they are using three delivery systems for that so one is com commercial transfection agents one, another one is conventional liposomes and then the one we are talking in this paper is the oral liposomes and they will compare the efficacy efficiency and the toxicity among these three like delivery systems so the results in summary like the broad overall picture will be that uh, with the conventional liposomes or the, the common chemical like transfection agents it is like less effective than the oral liposomes which uh, uh, they mentioned that uh, the sm smallest dose that was ineffective with the conventional and transfection was like more than 85% effective in silencing the particular gene and then 
what uh, the researchers have done is that they have done in, in vitro growth assays for ovarian cancer cells and they also use like two tumor uh, like models for like uh, one is uh, using in vivo tumor growth of like ovarian cell line and they have also used like skid immunodepressant uh, immunodeficient mice using patient derived xenograft models so the main like gist of this paper is that incorporation of gold nanoparticles shifted the intracellular optic pathways such that liposomes avoided degradation within lysosomes so this is like we're trying to efficiently deliver the drug or the silent uh, siRNA as well as like not trying to increase the toxicity in the normal cells so first before like designing the liposomes we have to like optimize the physiochemical like parameters so if liposome like consists of like a different components right because they have like liposomes is basically we have different components that have different charges because they have to interact with certain charges in the proteins or depending on where we are targeting we might uh, have to put all those targeting agents as well so for the optimization um, and uh, chemical composition uh, so uh, this like is uh, kind of a like uh, background the same lab like Dr. Mukherjee's lab previously did and it uh, laid the foundation that they were able to like use this CVS siRNA uh, to target the this CVS gene and uh, it, they were successful in, in like targeting the CVS gene and it inhibited the tumor growth and metastasis in the both human xenograft model as well as the in vitro model. So this was one of the like uh, bas basic like groundwork that that was like okay you know so this we already did it let's move forward and let's inc try to incorporate gold nanoparticles uh, with those like conventional liposomes. So so first like for the liposome formulation for the uh, liposome formulation what the researchers did is that they created a library of 11 liposomes so for that uh, but they need like uh, various like commonly used ingredients such as uh, dotap dope I i'm not good at chemistry but uh, these are these are all the components they use depending on like different charges so dotap is cationic charge dope is neutral lipid dope C is anionic lipid and pe peg is anionic charge uh, so uh, it is like basically depending on like different kind of interactions when moving the, in the body like uh, they, they will interact differently and what uh, most like this PEPEZ does is that it prolongs the circulation time in the in the body so because of its uh, property but I, I don't know how they interact or what it interacts to like in the cell but uh, they have used like different components with different charges so that it, it can interact depending on the uh, environment inside the body and also definitely for the liposomes they also need CVS siRNA because they are trying to deliver this siRNA to silence CVS gene and uh, they also used low level twin 20 uh, so it's a detergent and they are, it what it does is just like facilitates uptake of liposomes so for the characterization so they divided uh, the formulation depending on the different ratio of those uh, chemical components and also the ratio of like lipid versus the siRNA they used so here elps uh, is known as like empty liposomes so which means uh, it has no siRNA uh, on it then they divided the other groups as like f1 to F f10 and you can see like the lip lipid to siRNA is the ratio is same but they varied the ratio of different those of those different charge components in those like each liposomes and here like they used like to further like quantify like how the, the size is different in those liposomes they used dynamic light scattering DLS so uh, to calculate the hydrodynamic di diameter of those liposomes and then they also used zeta potential measurement to measure uh, the charge on those liposomes overall charge and also they used uh, the ribogrine assay uh, for the encapsulation efficiency and here on like uh, supplementary like uh, supplementary figure 1d we can see uh, the different size in in those different uh, uh, so here we said like they use like different formulation right from f1 to f10 so here they are they are quantifying okay what is the size or what is the charge on those uh, like particular liposomes they created and here 
on figure E, S1E, so here they, they have shown the encapsulation efficiency using the like green assay. And here we can see like almost 90% of them, are like the uh, liposome, it contains the CBS srna inside the liposomes. So moving to figure one, so uh, they uh, characterized like the five uh, physiochemical properties of those liposomal formation. And here what they are uh, doing is so control srna is like the control and then with the increase of uh, cbs srna we can see that the cbs gene silencing uh, we can see the silencing of the cbs gene so for this uh, what they did is that uh, transfected uh, using the hf transfection reagent for 48 hours and they used the cp20 ovarian cancer cells so after that, the, they did the liposome screening and here like uh, all those liposomes they created earlier, we can see that the arrow over here like F7, that this one like was like most successful in silencing the CVS gene. Yeah, Ujjal, one point yes. that you need to, you need to uh, make sure that it gets through. If you go to the previous slide, yes. so the purpose of this slide is to find out the appropriate dose. Okay. Against which the liposome will be tested. Oh. So the dose curve was made to see, okay, and these are using commercially available transfection agent. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, and so what we see with a dose of 133 nanomolar, the silencing is very good. Yes. But that 25 nanomolar, the silencing is okay, but it, but it is not as good. Yes. And so we wanted to use that dose where the silencing, silencing is not as effective because we thought if we then encapsulate in liposomal formulation, it might might be much more effective. And that's where we started with the lower dose and then see whether putting that low dose in liposome can make it even more effective. Oh. And that's why in the next slide that you saw at 25 nanomolar, yes. we don't see inhibition in any other cases, but only with F7 formulation, we see some uh, inhibition or silencing of the gene. And, okay. and also there is another uh, logic for selecting. Okay, no, okay, let's go on. So I let you talk. <laughs> I let you talk. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. It's it's okay because this is like a completely new area, right? Because I might be missing so many like general things that I need to know. So because right. yeah, I'll be presenting what I see, but I don't. Sometimes I don't know the reason behind it, right? So like that, the the dose itself. So uh, it will be better, you know, it, it's okay if you interrupt us and just like clarify, you know, why the main purpose of that experiment was. It will help okay. us learn, so it's okay. Okay, so here, like we saw F7, it has the best like silencing uh, property for like silencing the CBS gene. So here, like they will uh, uh, designate F7 as the conventional liposome. So throughout the paper now, like they will be comparing this conventional liposome CLP with other liposomes they will create using the gold nanoparticles. So uh, some of the like information about F7, so it is a positively charged particle. And uh, so the so, uh, to move forward, like uh, the reason for this, like uh, F7 uh, as a positively charged particle is that it uh, might be like highly likely to be uh, cleared for very fast in vivo. And uh, so I try to find this, uh, what RES means, that they say that it, uh, the reason might be because of the de rapid degradation by RES. But I, yeah. I, I did not find anywhere what RES it's, is. This so. is called reticular endothelial system. Oh, okay. What? So it's basically uh, macrophages and monocytes and all of those places. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because I, I tried to find like what is RES, but I could not find anywhere. So that helps. Right. Thank you. Okay. So now their goal will be like they will uh, first like test the efficacy of this uh, CLP, like conventional liposome, and then they will try to reduce the positive charge. And, and also like, like uh, as we like discussed Friday. Yes. You know, the charge is inversely proportional to tumor uptake. Yeah. So the more the charge, uh, the propensity of it to get cleared out from the body is very fast. So yes. we need to tweak the charge. So make it not that highly positive charge or highly negative charge, well, but, but, but close to neutral range. Yes. 
So how to do that? And that's what I think they're doing by doping now with gold. Yes, yes, yes. So what they are saying is that now they are trying to reduce the positive charges of F7. And uh, what they will do is that they will replace the aqueous solution of sRNA with the aqueous solution containing mixture of gold nanoparticles and sRNA. So this will reduce the charge of that F7. And of course, uh, we will see that it will increase the uh, uptake of by the cancer cells. So uh, the good thing about uh, the gold nanoparticles is that it is biocompatible and it also has like self therapeutic properties and are like easily surface functionalized. And uh, they use the 20 nanomolar uh, gold nanoparticles for like incorporating into the conventional liposomes. So now we know what our liposomes is, right? So this, yeah, these are the F7 liposomes that contains like 20 nanomolar. So this is molar, 20 nanomolar of gold nanoparticles. And now this will be considered oh, as- that, that, That's nanometer size. Yeah, this is um, capital M. That's why I pointed. Right, right. Yes. Okay, so now we know what oral liposomes is and what like conventional liposomes is. So here now they will characterize the gold nanoparticles like uh, the like they did for the conventional liposomes and they use the similar techniques for like size, the charge and the encapsulation efficiency. And here, so we can see that the size, even after the incorporation of gold nanoparticles, it's like it didn't change a lot but the charge we can see like with the different ratio of increasing ratio of those like uh, oral uh, liposomes like with the incorporation of gold nanoparticles we see that the charge reduced very significantly right to compare to the just the CLPs so that's what we wanted to reduce the positive charge but it's still the encapsulation efficiency for those CBS sRNA is still like very good but we don't see uh, that much change before like with the just the CLPs and after incorporating the gold nanoparticles. So that means we are successful in lowering the charge. That means now we can reach further to cancer cells without being just like released from the body. So here now they will uh, use like these 20 nanom nanomolar gold nanoparticles. And here we can see that with the incorporation of these uh, with the, like a ratio of 1 is to 10, it increased uh, compared to the just the, like auto liposomes. But here like in 1 is to 20, it decreased. But here what they are saying is, I didn't like quite understand this, but we should have seen more like a percentage of this uh, ANP of total. But what they are saying is that if there is like higher like level of uh, ANP, there might be a chance of aggregation and it might be like now the percentage total of ANP is like reduced but I didn't quite understand that you know so okay I think no, yeah I think you were right your conclusion was right uh, like the expected expectation is from 1 is to 5 to 1 is to 10 and 1 is to 20 you are basically increasing the amount of gold nanoparticles yes so the expectation would have been the higher the amount of gold, the higher will be the loading of gold into yes. the liposome. Yes. But what happens is that uh, when you increase uh, the amount beyond a certain level, gold gets aggregated. So these gold does, are not protected by anything. The surface of the gold gets aggregated and it becomes bigger. And that's, that's how it happened. Like you need to have an optimum amount of gold which can be incorporated. Beyond that, however much you use, nothing is going to get incorporated, rather the incorporation actually gets decreased because of the aggregation of those okay. particles. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, so now here we will see the like effect of CVS knockdown using using those different different ratios. And here we can see like 0 to 10, 1 to 10. So 0 to 10 is that we don't have like siRNA at all. And 1 is to 10 is we have CVS siRNA and then the oral liposomes and we can see that the ratio of 1 is to 10 is the best one to be able to silence CBS and also like they compared uh, the different the same ratios and then here like they, we can see that the ratio of 1 is to 10 is the best to silence the CBS uh, gene so from now on like the main purpose of this figure is that now they, they think that the 1 is to 10 ratio 
for the SRNA2 autoliposomes is the best one to be able to silence the CVS gene. So the main conclusion is that I just told you guys that the 20 nanomolar gold nanoparticles incorporated into the conventional SRNA liposomes at the ratio of 1 is to 10 was able to enhance the efficacy of SRNA and it also downregulated the CBS like a gene. Okay, so moving on to figure 2. So now, uh, so up to the point like they had the foundation of CVS uh, like siRNA and they knew that it was able to uh, inhibit the tumor growth but using autoliposomes they saw like even like better performance of the CVS siRNA but now they will move to a different target I already like in the beginning I, I mentioned you guys so which is Miku1 so now they are trying to see uh, okay we have a nanoparticle we know that you know decreasing the positive charge helps to like reach the target like tumor cells but how those size shape and core material like really like uh, alter the efficacy of those like silencing effect so for that they used like different materials such as like uh, so they used uh, first to uh, uh, make the size different they use like spherical gold nanoparticles of 5 20 and 50 nanom nanometer so this will change the size of the liposomes like in total and then with using the gold nano rods, 25 nanometer gold nano rods, it will change the shape. So uh, it changes the shape as well as it will reduce the positive charge of the overall liposome. And also they used uh, this 20, 20 nanomolar nan nanometer iron oxide nanoparticles. So uh, it is uh, a part of the core material and it also like helps in reducing the positive charge. So here we can see the effect of uh, so here the, these are like different size right so we we from figure one we two we said that the 20 nano nanometer gold nanoparticles like is is the uh, very efficient one for but decreasing the size of those gold nanoparticles and increasing the size of those gold nanoparticles we can see still the 20 nanometer gold nanoparticles is very efficient in silencing the micro one compared to like the lower gold nanoparticles and the higher gold nanoparticles so this means that yes size also matters you know so the size is also playing a very significant role in the like silencing of the gene and here we are using the uh, GNRs so these are the rods and these are changing uh, the charge and here like with the 25 nanometer GNRs we see that you know the charge it's different it reduced the charge and we can see like the effect is like not good as the 20 nanometer gold nanoparticle so this also suggests that yes charge is also important in the like is effective silencing of the gene using these gold uh, autoliposomes and on like figure 2c now they are looking for the like how the uh, uh, presence of like different core materials also uh, uh, like alters the efficiency and here it so we told that we said that these using these fe 304 materials it also reduces the charge and it is also like less efficient than the 20 nanometer gold nanoparticles so which suggests that you know it has to be the optimal size optimal charge and the optimal core material like so it we cannot like overload the liposomes because it will aggregate but at the same time the size charge overall charge will uh, vary so that means it will have an impact like uh, different than the like optimum contents that we use for silencing the particular gene and then they also like did the total like relative mrna analysis of those miku1 uh, then what they found was that this uh, miku1 srna auto liposomes was the best one to silence silence the miku1 gene Okay, so here now they on figure 2e they compare this uh, auto liposome they, they created with the like uh, available uh, commercial uh, transfection agents such as, such as lipofectamine 3000 and RNA IMAX. And here we, we see that the MIC1 sRNA incorporated in the auto liposomes is like far better in silencing the MIC1 compared to these commercially available transfection agents and on figure 2f they also checked for the serum stability 
uh, for like 96 hours this this one also like I was confused okay we see we can see that the, it is stable than those uh, commercial available agents but by, by looking at these two like conventional liposomes and the oral liposomes they look similar so how can we say it is better than the conventional liposomes so that was a question that came in my mind right in terms of stability so both of them are showing like they're stable yes and here you are not seeing the band means those are degraded by nucleases and that's why you're not seeing the band yes but since that rna is encapsulated within the liposomal formulation and that's why the rnas or dnas which are present in the media they cannot degrade them and uh, that's why so stability wise both are stable yes Okay, so if there is a liposome, then it will seal those srna from being degraded, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that is why people wanted to incorporate srnas into liposome and delivery. Okay. Yes. Okay. So on Figure two G, now they will look for the clonal growth of the ovarian cancer cells, and here we can see that it's still like better than all those like other uh, incorporation like HF or you know so it uh, incorporation within the like liposomes with gold nanoparticles particles is best at like reducing the clonal growth of those ovarian cancer cells and what they did was the crystal violet is standing after 12 days of culturing the cells so the main con conclusion for this figure 2 is that the size shape and the core material of the incorporated nanoparticles are critical uh, because like even the slightest change can bring a huge variation in uh, the way they silence the target gene or target proteins. And they also say that the MIKU1 isRNA in the liposome is stable and efficiently downregulates MIKU1 levels. That means, okay, it leads to the robust inhibition of clonal growth of ovarian cancer cells. Okay, so from figure three, they will move uh, towards the in vivo uh, experiments and the on figure three, where they will uh, use uh, the human genograft model of ovarian cancer. So what they will do is that they will uh, implant uh, the OV90 cancer cells, ovarian cancer cells to the mice subcutaneously and they will uh, look for the effect of these autoliposomes in vivo, how like they reduce or how they are efficient in reaching the tumor itself and uh, having its silencing effect. So what they did was that they intravenously injected with five microgram of uh, the Psi-5 labeled control SRN in either like conventional CLPs or oral liposomes. So we already to, uh, said that CLPs are have like highly positive surface charge, right? So now, now like uh, we already discussed this also that they are like highly prone for uh, getting degraded in the blood but okay here it says favors complement activation and macrophage uptake that means so it is a part of res right so on figure 3 a and b it both shows the amount of like gold nanoparticles that were uh, able to like reach the tumor cells and accumulate there and so compared to the clps we see that uh, the accumulation of autoliposomes in the tumor is like significantly higher than the control and also uh, they used this percentage sorry so they use this percentage of uh, injected dose per gram tumor and still we can see the accumulation is higher with the autoliposomes and then on, on figure 3c so now they will uh, uh, do the intravenous injection of 0 0.2 milligram srna per kilogram of body weight so this will be done for like every four days for 12 days and for here we can see that compared to the control srna or liposomes we can see that there is a very significant reduction in the label of tumor volume so this is accompanied by this like uh, diagram which is very amazing that you know the tumor is very big here but it's like reduced to like very small after we used the oral liposomes and the quantification of those tumor mass is it shows here the difference between the control and the just the conventional liposome is not significant but here we can see that it's a very huge reduction in the tumor mass and so they also uh, went ahead and did the messenger RNA and protein labels for those the MIKU1 and he here we can see that for the SET1 we can see a reduction our silencing of MIKU1 here also we have a silencing 
but here like so they also discuss this in the discussion section but here they are seeing the silencing of mic one in both like conventional liposomes and the autoliposomes so this is one thing to keep in mind i will i will uh, so leave this for the discussion because they also discuss in great detail because you know we are saying our liposomes are better but on this set three of like animal experiment we see both like reduction in both mice so we will discuss this in the discussion so it will be a very good point to leave it for the end and here like uh, they are checking the relative messenger RNA labels and also it is like it's the same quantification here in like set one and set two we can see a reduction and that goes with our like hypothesis but set three we we can see like they are like almost uh, like increased than the conventional liposome so there might be some reasons behind that one so we can also think for the reasons and we will discuss it you know why it it, it might be happening and now they uh, do the immunohistochemical staining for uh, the tumors and they will look for the MIC1 expression in those tumors. And here, I like, compare to the control SRNA, we can see I, yeah, the expression is very, very low when we used uh, MIC1 SRNA autoliposomes. And here, the quantification shows that it's like very significantly lower than compared to both, like just the control SRNA or the conventional liposomes. So on on Figure Three I. Uh, they uh, use um, these uh, different cell proliferation marker and apoptosis marker. So Ki67 is a cell proliferation marker, and uh, here, like compared to the control srna autoliposomes, we can see that mic one srna in the autoliposomes it uh, killed a lot of cells, cancer cells. And the tunnel is a uh, apoptosis assay, so we are looking for a very high staining if there is a high uh, level of apoptosis. And we can see that using this mic one SRNA autoliposomes, where there is a high rate of apoptosis. And this is the quantification. So the cancer cells, like uh, the Ki67 positive cells, it decreased, yes, because we are killing those cancer cells. And here we expect a very high increase in the apoptosis, that means so with the comparison with the control srna we can see a very high rate of apoptotic uh, cells in the mic one srna autoliposomes so figure 3k uh, was a little bit tricky because I'm, i don't know i'm i'm not a pathologist and i don't know how to look at the like individual nuclei or how they are set up but what uh, the researchers like uh, the authors um, focused on was that here we can see clearly that there is a low density of tumor cells in the mic one srna or the liposomes and uh, yeah, they also collected um, different organs and they, uh, they looked for the, the toxicity uh, and here on the conventional liposomes what they found was uh, this was the development of hepatitis hepatitis so i, I don't know how so maybe uh, Dr. Mukherjee, if you can explain it to us. So just looking at this, how we can say it's a hepatitis in liver. Yeah, and again, I'm also not a pathologist. <laughs> but, but Dr. Carmen Fan, who actually we always give slides to him and okay. he comes back with the analysis and the conclusions. Okay. So it is Dr. Fan's con conclusion. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so what they said was that like, they found like uh, hepatitis in liver in those like conventional liposomes and with all those different organs they saw uh, the absence of toxicity in those like uh, mic one srna or the liposomes so the main conclusion of figure 3 is that oral liposomes enhance the gene silencing efficacy of srna with no appreciable toxicity in preclinical animal model of ovarian cancer so now we move on to the another another uh, uh, cancer model. So this one is using the patient derived genograft model and they used skid mice for this experiment. But before uh, moving um, on to the experiment, they use like they screen for like different patient der uh, derived genografts. And uh, which here what they have decided is that the PDX098, although PDX119 has a very high expression of MIC1, they decided to go with PDX098. I don't know what was the deciding factor. Maybe Dr. Mukherjee will tell to us. Yeah, and I think the the reason we selected uh, 098 versus 119 is that 098 forms tumor at a much uh, faster rate oh. than uh, 119. Okay. 
one or, one or nine takes about six months to do, to develop tumor, whereas zero nine eight forms the tumor much faster. Oh, okay, so it's it's not like if we have MIKO one high expression, that doesn't mean that it it is a very effective. Not necessarily tumor. always that is the case. Okay, 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 okay. So after choosing the PDX zero nine eight, they also like went ahead and did the HNA staining. And the main conclusion they found with the HNE staining was that they found uh, the TME, like uh, some symptoms, like it looked like that. And that they also saw it has malignant potential. And also, as Dr. Mukherjee said, it has a very high, like fast tumor growing potential. So, so they selected the PDX098 and they uh, injected it to the skin immunodeficient mice. And the injection was done uh, for like 35 days. And here we can see that the uh, MIC1 sRNA autoliposomes uh, injected mice, like the tumor volume is significantly lower than all the other uh, control and uh, just the MIC1 sRNA treated groups. But here the, they added one more thing, cisplatin, so which is one of the uh, common like chemotherapy drug used in many cancers, including like mainly ovarian cancer. So they also incorporated cisplatin and how it can uh, vary. So because we are trying to find a better treatment right because cisplatin we are using currently uh, in the clinic so if we incorporate cisplatin along with the micro one srna or like something then what effect it will have so, and we can clearly see that it uh, improves the like tumor reduction by a significant amount okay so then here uh, uh, it's the quantification at the 35 day at the tumor volume and we can as we already said, it has a significant reduction in the tumor volume. And just like this is a pictorial uh, detail of like how the tumor size like varies with the control versus the micro one. So which is very interesting because when we just look at the graphs, it, it is not, you know, the, you, you are not convinced. But when you look at the real tumor size and the decreasing by this much amount, you will be like, oh, it, it works. And we can see the tumor getting small. So it was interesting. And then this is the tumor weight uh, compared to all those different groups. Groups, and we ha now we have that the MIC1 sRNA autoliposome plus the cisplatin has a very low tumor weight. So then uh, they went ahead and did the MIC1 expression using uh, the same IHC and uh, all those cell proliferation marker and. Uh, apoptosis assay and uh, we can see that when we used first let's go to figure 4f so here we can see uh, MIC1 expression is decreased uh, when they used uh, the MIC1 sRNA autoliposomes and then they perform the apoptosis assay we can see a very uh, significant amount of apoptosis happening here from the tunnel assay and they also looked for Ki67 cell proliferation marker it's not very strong it's all here, here itself but compared to these two, we don't see a lot. But Dr. Mukherjee, like, is, is this like very convincing? Because even in the control itself, we don't see much of K67 staining. So it is it is sometimes typical. And again, this is just a section of a slide. It's not the whole slide. Yes, it's just a representative picture. Like what happens to the K67 nuclei treated versus non-treated. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, thank you. And they also did the HNA staining and the serious rate staining. So what the, they were trying to say from these two staining is that there was a reduction in the amount of fibrosis and uh, the amount of collagen fibers. Here we can clearly see this one, but it, this one, it's very hard. But looking at this, this is very dark and this is less dark. That means there is a reduction in the amount of fibrosis and the amount of collagen fibers in those tumor lysates. So the main conclusion for figure four was that uh, incorporating the low level of uh, gold nanoparticles in those sRNA liposomes, which is like oral liposomes formulation, it enhances the silencing efficacy both in vitro and then in the preclinical animal models as well. Okay, so on figure five, so up to this point, okay, we tried in vitro in the calcides, we tried like in vivo as well, but now, uh, when we are the authors try to find okay how the autoliposomes are being transported to the targeted cancer cells because we are saying 
that okay we reduced the charge positive charge from the CLPs now it's better we, we saw the effect in both like MR and protein labels but uh, how like or why just reducing the charge and using gold nanoparticles these are getting into the tumor cells very well and having this uh, like high silencing impact so they now look uh, towards the potential mechanism of like how there is and this enhanced silencing efficacy of oral liposomes compared to the CLPs. So what they did was they interrogated the endocytic optic pathways of liposomes. So because this is the major route of like uh, drug delivery or the liposomes, it gets uptaken by the endosomes and then it gets into the cells, right? So they interrogated these endocytotic like optic pathways for liposomes. So uh, for this, they used the established inhibitors. So for uh, the three main endocytosis pathways, so one is like clathrin mediated endocytosis (CME), and then the other one is caviolar mediated endocytosis, and the other one is macropinocytosis. So uh, then, what they did is that they monitored the uptake of liposomes again using the Cy5 labeled sRNA by OV90 cells. So here uh, on figure 5a, we can see the use of different inhibitors of, the, of those uh, pathways. And uh, what they found was this uh, particular like Philippine uh, inhibitor was uh, on all the other inhibitors, we see that like, not much difference or like even better performance is still in, by inhibiting uh, the endocytosis pathway. But you on this like Philippine inhibitor, they found that there is a less uh, uh, uptake of those autoliposomes uh, uh, autoliposomes in those uh, cells. So what they de uh, deducted was that Philippine is the one which is like inter uh, interrupting the CVME, this caviolar mediated endocytosis pathway. So uh, now what they will do is that they will like try to silence the CAV1 gene because CAV1 is responsible for inhibiting CVME. So they will silence the CAV1 gene and this verifies that they silenced the CAV1 gene successfully. And now they will look for the uptake of those like autoliposomes in the cells. So the, on this particular figure, I'm confused because I don't know what this, if the these blue staining are the cells or just the endos, endosomes. So I was a little bit confused. So the blue staining is the DAPI stain for so the nucleus. nuclei. Okay. And the red is for the nanoparticles, which is uh, again labeled with Psi, psi, psi 5. Yes. Okay, so this is basically it is inside the cells. Right. Okay, because that, that was confusing uh, uh, to see because, you know, here if it's a nuclei, it's two cells, then is it going inside the cells? Uh, it's already inside the cells because there are two nuclei or, you know, so it was a little bit uh, confusing for me. But what they are trying to emphasize from this figure is that compared to the conventional liposomes, we can still see the incorporation of those CLPs, but the other liposomes, after knocking down CAV1, we can see the very less amount of other autoliposomes being uh, up, uptaken inside the cells. And this is the quantification. So this is for the conventional liposomes. So, uh, and they saw a reduction in the uptake. But what they're saying is it's not like that much significant than compared to this percentage uptake of autoliposomes, where, where uh, we are saying like uh, less than like 80%. Uh, of the optic then compared to the other liposomes so it's it's clear like somewhat clear that okay knocking down carbon we can we can see that our liposomes are not being efficiently delivered into the cells so now they will look for okay let's let's knock down carbon then let's see the expression of mic one between the carbon knockdown and the like just the carbon present and here we can see using the MIC1 sRNA autoliposomes, we can see a reduction of MIC1 as we already saw, right? But once we knock down CAV1, we can see that MIC1 comes back. That means, you know, these MIC1 sRNA autoliposomes are not being able to get into the target cells and reduce the MIC1 gene expression. That's why uh, we, we can see that it came back again. That means now autoliposomes are less efficient. So this means that, okay, CAV1 or the CVME pathway is the is the one that is dictating the transport of these liposomes into the cancer cells so on figure 5g they will do this first and like a co-localization of endosomes plus clps plus nuclei as well as the uh, autoliposomes and here on the clps while well, we it's not 
very obvious but to see in the beginning but there is some localization with the endosomes here but compared to these oral liposomes we do not see like these red dots trying to get inside those uh, endosomes here so what they are saying here is that the oral liposomes do not co-localize with the endosomes so also in, in this one also we so maybe this is also you know one of just one of the section but here we can see okay the CLP is within the endosome looking at here but here it's it might be inside but most of them are outside outside of those endosomes so so they, this means that what they are suggesting is that it is like uh, escaping the uh, endosomal like uh, pathway of uh, like getting into the target cells and then on figure 5h now they will uh, look for the lysosomal uh, co-localization of those um, CLPs versus oral liposomes and the yellow is the lysosomal co-localization so non-treated we don't see any co-localization yeah that makes sense then uh, when we used the conventional liposomes we can see a very high uh, co-localization of those um, siRNA in those uh, lysosomes but then here on the like oral liposomes we do not see uh, that much of like co-localization of those uh, siRNA then they quantified this one so here they uh, did this pp2a enzymatic activity so what pp2a does is uh, it regulates the uh, maturation of endosomes and their fusion with lysosomes that means if pp2a enzymatic activity is less that means the lysosomal fusion and the endosomes activity is less and then what they found was that uh, compared to the non-treated and the CLPs, they found that the CTL like control sRNA oral liposomes, it was like significantly reduced uh, the amount of PP2A. That means the lysosomal pathway and the endosomes is less in those like treated with oral liposomes. So the main conclusion from this figure five is that the CVME optic, as we said, because of that CAV1, CAV1, and the co-localization the the uptake of oral liposomes reduces lysosomal degradation and leads to enhanced gene silencing and also they saw that the inhibiting uh, inhibition of pp2a activity so which uh, is a critical factor in switching off the uptake of a pathway of oral liposomes and then what they are saying is okay same thing incorporating gold nanoparticles in the clps makes the optic pathway like via the caviolar optic pathway cvme pathway and result which results in the less lysosomal degradation and enhanced efficacy so uh, up to figure five uh, those were all the experiments uh, uh, the authors did and on figure six it's just the uh, like main overall like just the summary of of the whole uh, research and on figure six a they uh, just try to show us the incorporation of those oral liposomes in different cells. So is the, is this the gold nanoparticles, the black dots, and this is a liposome? Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I was confused if these the black dots are the like liposomes and this is a cell and they are getting into the cells. No, oh, because you know the liposome size is around hundred nanometer. Yes. And gold size is around twenty nanometer that okay. we use. Yes. So these are the gold and it is so dark because it has high electron density than the organic molecules like liposome. Yes. So that's why it is so highly contrasting than the other organic part. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. I, I was just going to say I really like this picture because it is so descriptive yes. of what you can see in the liposome. Anyhow. Yeah. yeah. It's very hard to get these kind of pictures though. So this is TEM, right? This is TM. This is TM. It's very, very difficult. And one thing is basically the way you do the TM, you drop coat those nanoparticles or whatever on the TM grid. Mm -hmm. And then you air dry it. And that makes it to degrade at some time. So getting oh. this intact lipo liposome and having gold discreetly showing inside it, it's yes. very challenging. Yes, that's true. Definitely. People normally do cryo TM. But here it is using regular TM. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so uh, on figure 6B, uh, so this is just the like uh, overall uh, summary of the, the entire. 
pathway on like how CLPs and oral liposomes differ in the targeting as well as the transport of uh, these liposomes in the tumor cells. So what they're saying, as we already told, like CLPs go into the target cells with multiple pathways like CME, CVME or macropinocytosis. And what it does was that there is a high amount of lysosomal degradation, high silencing, very low silencing activity compared with the oral liposomes and the anti-tumor efficacy was like very low as we already saw, saw, saw on those data. But then when we used oral liposomes, they we found out that the it switches to the mainly the pathway of this CVME, you know, cavioli mediated endocytosis. And what it did was there was a reduction in PP2A, that means less lysosomal degradation. And the silencing uh, efficacy was very high and the anti-tumor efficacy was also very high. So this is the overall picture of, you know, how the there is a difference between the CLPs or liposomes in the first hand and then how they differ in the overall like tumor reduction and the silencing activity of the target gene. So in the dis discussion section now, uh, uh, I, I told on this figure 3 F and G that there, there was like a variability, right? Even with CLPs and oral liposomes, there was like reduction or the knockup, like silencing of the MIC1 gene. So that they gave the authors gave us like three three main reasons uh, for for this like uh, difference. You know, we were expecting to see like more silencing compared to the CLPs, but we saw similar reduction of those like silencing effects. So one of the reason they mentioned was that there might be an accumulation of those CLPs in tumors of CLP treated animals, and it's not equal. So it's I think it's mainly like depending on case by case basis when we inject those. Lip liposomes, uh, the each animal will act differently, and each body will act differently. I think this is this is the main difference what they are emphasizing that. And also, the they said that there is a lysosomal degradation of CLP, and the rate of those degradation might be like different between uh, the treatment groups, and even with the same animals in the, the different animals in the same group. And the other reason was that the of course the heterogeneity that exists in vivo is quite common so that means you know like even within the group or between groups like each animal is different and their uh, body I might act differently to different drugs so that those three reasons uh, the authors have mentioned that might be having that similar effect of make one knockdown on those CLPs and oral liposomes. So also like uh, they emphasize on the fact that uh, integrating these 20 nanomolar gold nanoparticles, it enhances the silencing efficacy substantially. And uh, what uh, they also emphasize is that using gold nanoparticles also poses another advantage that uh, using like uh, the UV light, they can also like trigger the release of liposome cargo. So that is also another advantage these gold nanoparticles incorporation like has in the uh, drug delivery. Okay, so uh, they also emphasize the so why this twenty nanometer size of uh, like a gold nanoparticle in the CLPs uh, is important, and so uh, they give like two main reasons for this one. So one we already told right between CLPs and oral liposomes, there is a reduction in the overall charge. So that means it switches the intracellular uptake toward the CVME, so cavular uptake pathway. And also like it inhibited the PPTO2A activity that means there is a less uh, lysosomal degradation and they uh, they they inhibited the fusion of caviosome with the lysosome. So the conclusion of uh, this paper is that the siRNA liposomes are taken up by cells uh, through endocytosis pathway including this CME and CVME as well as macropinocytosis so this is usually for the conventional liposomes but then when we added like these 20 nanomolar nanometer gold nanoparticles to CLPs the uh, pathway shifted to like uh, mostly CVME and what it did was that the allowed the escape to lysosomes so it's just a repetition of same thing I'm saying but you know the main theme is that it is efficient than the CLPs itself and also so the main uh, I'm, Conclusion of this paper is that is that you know it so the authors or the researchers were able to develop a novel therapeutic delivery platform by SRNA because using conventional 
um, SRNA or conventional liposomes, so we saw that there is a less uh, efficacy, but just the incorporation of those uh, gold nanoparticles and by reducing the charge, we can have so much uh, big difference in the silencing effect. And then what they said is that the other liposomes exhibited excellent biostability and there was less lysosomal degradation and superior gene silencing. And it was done in both in vitro, in vivo, in both like human xenograft and patient de derived xenograft models of ovarian cancer. So the main goal of the, this uh, paper and the future direction was that the, a, there is like only one liposomal sRNA drug and that is FDA approved and others are in clinical trial. But uh, there was like there is no sRNA therapeutic intervention for like ovarian cancer in the market right now. So uh, what the authors are emphasizing that these autoliposomes provide a promising avenue for development of such therapeutic. That means using autoliposomes, gold nanoparticles in the conventional liposomes and increasing the efficacy to intervene the ovarian cancer. And uh, they also emphasize the fact that we can also incorporate these liposome based uh, like therapy with the combination of like uh, conventional therapy such as cisplatin as we saw earlier that uh, helps in like you know increasing the efficacy of tumor uh, reduction like more than just using the cisplatin alone or any conventional therapy so that's all so you guys have any questions or anything to discuss i think we we can do that now because that's all i have from this paper yeah good job good job thank you i tried my best like because yeah, it is. It is a complicated paper. Yes, there are a lot of data and stuff. But but you did you, you did quite good. Again, anybody has any questions? And again, if you have questions, then again you can always uh, say, shoot me an email, stop by to my office, and all that. And I'm always there. And if you do not have any questions, I think uh, let's give Ujjal a big applause for doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, take care, you guys. Stay safe. And when your semester is going to be over, it's going to be over soon, right? Yes. I think we should be yeah, over this week, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys have exam. When, when is your exam? We don't know yet. We don't know yet because we haven't received any kind of email. Nothing. Okay. Like that, so. Yeah, because uh, I have been asked to send the questions. So oh. Oh, probably it will be soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.